you are hoping friends will do it. What God should do for you, you are hoping social media will do it. Attracting sympathy from the whole world. What, you, what God should do for you is what you think money will. Listen, let me tell you this. The greatest of anything will fail you. Return back to his presence. That is the place where you can cry and you know you are safe. That is the place where you can roll before him. For many of us, you know what is your God by how frequent you run to it. So the uncle that you are always disturbing for your lifting, listen carefully, you know who and what is your God by the frequency of your visitation. Every five minutes you are on social media searching who will when he says come unto me all ye that are heavy laden afterwards you run from pillar to post ah. am I wasting your time return to him more to love him above and beyond everything he says what shall separate us from the love of God what shall separate us from the love of God and he begins to list all kinds of things. He said, nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Neither has it entered the heart of any man. What God has in store, not for prayer warriors, not for fasting giants, not for preachers, not for eloquent people, not for business people, but for them that love him. Them that love him. Them that love him. Please hear me. For someone God is calling you and he's saying I am still waiting where you left me five years ago I am still waiting man of God I'm still waiting where I was with you before invitation started coming I'm still there waiting patiently would you return back to me I am still waiting you cried and cried and cried and cried when you had no job I'm still waiting where you received your employment letter Please take this as the voice of God tonight. Because if we don't pray for our generation, this level of lukewarmness we keep marketing and giving flimsy excuses is not about fanatism. It's about passion and desire. Don't care, don't tell me you are a preacher. Don't tell me you are a businessman, you are a deacon, you are an apostle. That is none of my business. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Lovest thou me more than fame? Lovest thou me more than ministerial exploits? Lovest thou me more than ministry titles? Lovest thou me more than money? Can I tell you this? If you fail in everything in life, but not in loving Jesus, you did not fail. If you win in every other thing in life and fail in your love life, oh dear, you failed. You failed. Do you know why most of our children today do not love God? Because the depth of passion they see comes from their parents. And so if they see a father and a mother and leaders who are not serious about God, giving flimsy excuses, that becomes their template too. When a child sees his father rolling before God every day, Lord, there is nothing I have and there is nothing I am except you. One day that child will come and roll with you too. Even if he does not know what you are doing. Listen, let me tell you, we may not understand what we are doing now till the next 10, 15 years. There will rise a generation that will not honor God. May God forbid it. I say it again. May God forbid it. Let it not be that it is in our lifetime. We will see shrines return back to homes. Not just villages, so homes. Can I tell you this? For some of you, you need to suspend ministry activities for a while and go back to the altar. This, this deception of invitations and open door can dry you spiritually. Oh, I'm doing ministry, exploits, I'm traveling from nation to nation. 
Isaiah was doing ministry when there was a call in heaven, who shall go for us? Whereas on earth there was ministry going on. All kinds of things. When people clap and say, Joshua Selman, you are busy, you go from place to place. I just smile and respectfully say, God bless you. When I return back with God, I say, I reject deception. Oh God, I, your boy is here from where you found me. May I ever remain there? Ministry nonsense. Right from the place of his presence, he can honor you to bless the nations. But see, Satan will give you ministry open doors a thousand times if it will cost you his presence. Oh, with Jesus' joy, he will open doors for you. Not every open door is anointed. I've told you this thing. There are doors you have to shut intentionally. Please return, return. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but the Holy Spirit is speaking to someone. Return, return. I'm not condemning you, but return. God is saying, I am still waiting. Return to the place of the altar, the place of fire, the place of power. Return to the place of His presence. He called them that they would be with Him and then represent Him. I'd rather be called a failure as a man of God and yet succeed and win with God than to have the accolades of men across the nations and then you do not carry any weight with God. Someone pray right where you are. Father, grace to return. Please, someone pray. Pray. Grace to return. Grace to return. Grace to return, O oh God. Mm. Pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More love. More power, more of you in my life. Please pray one minute. More love, more power, more of you in my life. More More power, more of you in my life. In the name of Jesus. Question two. The second question we have to ask and answer tonight, and then we're done. What does it mean, and what does it take to please God? Remember the first question. What does it mean? And what does it take to walk with God? We said it means to love Him and to prioritize Him above and beyond anything this world can offer, including your own life. 